Hi FlossTube, it's Darren. Welcome back to my Stitch With Me. So today we're going to be working on my Castle Wolves, uh, which is a head piece. Now, as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I get all organised um, in order to start doing one of my pieces. So we're going to go through how I set everything up first. Um, and then after that, we'll start doing some stitching on this piece as well. So um, I have my Ada, which is 28 count uh, easy guide. Um, so yeah, it's quite a big piece. It's uh, 34 inches by 27 inches. Now I like to give myself a bit of a, a border. Um, so it makes it easier when I put it on the uh, Q snaps. And then when I eventually finish them and it comes to framing, I've then got the uh, extra material on there so um, I've got plenty of uh, give if you like so I can sort it all out so this is uh, my fabric as I say and what I like to do on this piece um, I've, I've got a five inch border all the way around so what I do is get my trusty tape measure and I measure my five inches in, sorry, you can't see. So my five inches is roughly round about here. So what I will do, I've got a needle ready. So once I've got my five inch area, I'll just put a mark in there. So then I know where that one is. And then I'll measure five inches down from the top. Just make sure I had the fabric the right way around then. I thought I had it the wrong way around. <laughs> so my five inches down from the top will be here. So what I will then do is make sure I follow my line down. Which will take me to here. And then I'll just put my needle through. And then I know that's my that's my starting spot. I hope you can see that. So that's my starting spot of where I'm going to be starting my piece from. And then the fun part is then now trying to get it into the cue snap so that it's actually level um, and tight enough that I can start stitching on it. So I'm just going to take the clips off the cue snap. Now, I like the Q-snaps because they have a better grip than the, the cheaper version. The only thing I don't like about the Q-snaps is, for some reason, they seem to pull apart a bit easier until you've got the clamps back on it again. I don't know why. So, what I will do next is I will line it up and try and get a straight line as I can going across where the Q-snap part of the clamp part is going to go on and then I'll make sure that my piece isn't too close to the edge because there's nothing worse than trying to stitch and then catching the edge of it all the time so once I've got that into place I will then put my clamp on so that's that side and then I will spin it around and then do the bottom part and when I'm doing the bottom part obviously you've got all your excess if you can see this, you've got all your excess fabric. So what I will do is I'll pull it up so it's folded in half on the bottom. And put my clamp on. And then I will do the same with the sides. Now this side, because obviously there's not an awful lot there, I don't really worry about folding that bit over. So that one will just get clamped straight away. Like that and then the final side again because you've got all the excess I'll fold that in half as well so that, that hangs over try and make it as neat as I can and that's that on and then if you've not used Q-snaps before all you need to do is just twist it 
And that one. Sorry, you can hear some birds now. I'm having an argument outside. I do apologize about that. It's the only thing when you've got the windows open. <laughs> so hopefully you can hear me over the birds. So once you've tightened all these up, it's uh, tight enough for you to stitch on. So that part is all ready to go. So my needle's in my starting spot. So that's all ready. Um, the next thing then is obviously sorting out the floss. Now this is my floss that I've got for this. There's some really nice colors in this one. So some of these are the new colors as well. So you've got your purples, your yellows. It's all normal like pastely colors for this piece. So it should look pretty nice once it's done. Now I pulled the first piece out that I'm going to be using um, just to show you how I um, organize my floss. So I put these on these thread drops. So I've only got a couple here. I'm just going to do this one just to let you know how, how I do it. So first thing first is take it off of the, the ring. So I've got my spare piece there. And then, so I apologize for the motorbike. <laughs> and then um, what I do next is I unravel all this. Now, if you've not, if you're not sure how you do with the DMCs, um, you generally find that you've got two ends of the, the, the floss. One is at the end where it says DMC, and the other end is where the number is, which is here. So you always start by pulling out the end where the number is, and it stops it all from getting tangled up. So what I do is take it out, I just hold it with this hand here just to keep it steady and then just pull it all in. So once you've got it all pulled out, I keep this to one side just so I remember what number it is. Because there's nothing worse than getting mixed up. Join my two ends together and then just go all the way down to the, the end again. Now sometimes when you get near the end it does get a little bit tangled up but you just pull it and it un unravels. And then once you've got to the end again, put those two together and then do it again. And then again, you get to the end, put those together. And again, put it together. And then the last one is done. So with these, I like to make sure that they're long enough. Um, so it is quite a, a decent size. So it's like just a bit more than from my end of my fingers to my elbow so it goes just a bit past that and then with the loose ends you keep that one spare and then with the ends where it's all folded up you split it a bit put it through your hole and then pass your thread back through it he says and no, i just dropped the whole lot that's a good start isn't it so let's try that again shall we <laughs> Make sure you grab both ends when you're pulling it through. <laughs> Pull it through and then that's that. It's on nice and secure. And then you generally want to try and make sure that the two ends are level at the bottom. Mine wasn't. So. So make sure they're all, all level. And try and get it right at the top. Normally, I do this straight the first time, but obviously, because I'm doing it on video, it has to be awkward. There we go. And then, once you've done that, just get your scissors and cut through your loops. And then that's all 
split into your individual strands. So obviously I'm doing these long um, for if I want to do one over one. Um, if I'm doing two over one, for example, or two over two, then when you take your thread off, you just fold it in half again. So, and then once that's done, I get my quad sharpies over here. So just like permanent marker. And then on my uh, thread drop, I just write the DMC number. And then that I will then just put back on my ring. And then that's ready. So obviously I'll finish doing the other ones later on. Um, and then once that's done, I can then just keep this in with the the design um, if I want to. Or uh, because when I ordered the floss for this, I ordered it also for the Warthog Guardians. So it does use a couple of the same colours in both of those. Um, so I may just keep these all separate, all out, just all together. So then when I need a colour, I'll just go through, find the number I want, pull that one off, and then use it for the piece I'm working on. And then obviously that is no needed, so I'll get rid of that. So that's how I set everything up ready for stitching. So pretty easy really, um, and straightforward. So it doesn't take a lot. And then obviously when you've got this all sorted out, when you want to get your first piece, and this is where I have to be careful now not to lose my mark. So. And what I will do is I'll just make that hole a little bit bigger so I can see it when I come back to it. And then if you've not done these before, you just put your needle under the first piece. And then just pull. And it pulls the hole out. And then that's sorted. So that's all, all then ready to go. So, obviously because I'm doing this one over one, these pieces are going to be bit longer but again this is how I thread my needle so I just put loop it around there I'll zoom in a little bit uh, I loop it around and then just feed it through the eye of the needle pull it through that's it easy as that now obviously if your threads are too long I mean this may be a little bit too long because obviously I'm going to be doing this on 28 count I'm just zoom back out again because um, I'm going to do it on 28 count, I may actually just cut this in half and then put the other half back onto the thread drop and then it's ready for when I need it. So if you bear with me a second, that's what I'm going to do because this is way too long. So it is a, that's why I say it's a good idea doing it this, keeping the threads long for if you're going to be doing uh, like two strands because you can then just fold it in half but if you don't want to do two strands then simply just cut it in half and then put one back on your, that, your thread drop and then the other one you can just keep it how you need it that's it I'm ready to go so right now all I've got to do now is try and find out where my mark was. There it is. Right, right so I'm just gonna bring up my pattern now. So, as you know, I use uh, Pattern Keeper for uh, my heads. So it's all loaded up and ready to go. So this piece has 300,950 stitches. Um, now obviously, this is where you have to decide now whether you want to do it um, 10 stitch, which is two over one, which does go a lot quicker, or you full cross one over one. <clears throat> so on this one, because I really like this piece, I'm gonna do this one over one full cross. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do this one one over one full cross instead of the um, two over one tenth stitch. So, I'll just get you in position, so then you can see what I'm doing. So again, I'm, I'm doing this on my knee because I'm using my stand to hold the phone so I can record this. 
Um, I am going to look at getting one of the clamps that actually goes over. You can hook it onto like windows or tables or something like that. So then you can uh, do like overhead recording. So, so again, I'll show you how I start. So I just go down in one hole. So at the top of the hole. So as you can see the line, so I go in at the top and then I come up where my first stitch is going to be, which is here. I pull it, so I've got a bit of a tail just sticking out on the, on the fabric there. Go down. There. Come back up on your bottom leg. Hold down this part where you've got your like your loose tail at the top. Pull it till that's a bit tight. Then pull the other part, and you'll see. I don't know if you can see, you'll see that one slowly go through. Do it so it's near enough through. Pull it through. Complete your stitch. And you can see this. And then once I've completed my first stitch, I'll scrape my nail, uh, nail, needle down the back, which will then pull the little tail part through. So you can do it that way. Some people do cut that little tail part off as well. Um, I just prefer to scrape it down. It's a lot easier. So, and then you just carry on stitching. And that first stitch is nice and secure. That won't go anywhere. I'm not sure how clear this uh, colour is showing up on your screen. Hopefully you can see the, the stitches I'm doing on there. Now, obviously when I'm putting the needle down, I like to hold this end here just to make sure that it stays pretty neat. I do have a habit sometimes of forgetting to let go and then end up unthreading the needle and then I have to <laughs> thread it all again and redo it. But that doesn't take too long to do, so I don't mind. So, and that's that. So then we just get on and start stitching. So, now, uh, if you are not finished watching, well, if you haven't watched my weekly update yet then if you are interested in hate then feel free to nip over there i am giving a giveaway on that one uh, to celebrate my 1000 subscribers now i did i do say on there that I, I don't have a lot of money um all my current stuff that i've purchased yeah in australia you get like a tax back every July and I use my money from my tax to purchase some stuff um, so the main reason is obviously I knew I was going to be starting a floss tube and I wanted to make sure that I had some projects to actually work on because what's the point of having a floss tube if you've only got like three or four projects obviously I had seven to start with um, which probably may have been enough, but I just wanted to give people a bit of variety um, instead of just watching me stitch on the same seven things every week. And then once they're, they're done, then it's like, you well, you've got nothing to watch and then I need to try and find some more things to do. So I thought, well, if I get myself some materials, then I can get on and start them. And then we've got multiple projects to, to choose from. I'm a, I know a lot of mine are hades, um, so they're going to take a while anyway to complete. So it's not like I'm going to run out of anything soon, but I'd prefer you to have a variety of things to watch and see the progress on rather than just like the same two or three things each week. Now, so far, hey, September, I'm enjoying. 
Obviously, I know everybody else is doing sampler September, but as you know, I don't really do samplers. I am going to try a sampler. I've got the Long Dog Sampler Pandemic. I've worked it out. I think I can get fit it on. Um, if you remember, I showed you that piece of picture, that picture of this plus fabric. And if I'm right, I can get it to fit on there. Um, I will be doing it one over one. Um, although on the design, it does call for two over two if you're using like linens and stuff like that. Um, but I did join the pandemic, no, Long Dog Sampler Facebook group. And I asked on there if people were doing it, anyone was doing it one over one. And there is someone doing it over, one over one on 28 count, which is what I'm going to be doing it on. And it still looks really good. So I'll check the fabric. And as far as I'm aware, it does fit. So obviously that one won't be getting started till next month. Because all I'm working on this month is my haids. Well, except for that Christmas bauble. But I only work on that for an hour or so a, a week while I'm talking to my mum. So... Hope. Sorry guys, I moved my thing, so I'm hoping you can see this one. It looks like you can see the stitches on there, so... Yeah, so it's coming along nicely. Now, while I remember, apologies, um, I did mention that I was going to answer someone's questions um, that they sent through. So let me just find those. Sorry for the silence. Uh, here we go. So, the first question. So these are from a lady called um, Jackie. Um, she was not long since been a subscriber of mine, but I've talked to her a few times, so I'm getting quite well with her. So if you are watching Jackie, hi. <laughs> and here's your questions. It took a while, but I'm answering those for you now. So, the first question she's got is, what, what is some advice you would offer to someone who has just discovered cross-stitch? So, the advice I would give for anybody who's just starting out with cross-stitching is don't just go by what everybody else is doing. So, if you have like see people, say on Flosstube for example, and everybody's doing Pandemic, for example, doesn't mean you have to do a pandemic. Um, look for designs that you want to do um, and what you like. So for me, for example, it's obviously Hades. I enjoy doing Hades. Um, most of mine are animals, as you can tell. I don't know why, but the animal ones just call to me a lot more than some of the other ones. There are a couple of decent charts out there that aren't animal related that I do like but I always seem to lean towards the animals first um, also as well do your research um, with regards to what you want to what size well what kind of fabric you want to stitch on um, whether it be your Ada or your linens or whatever um, you can get I think they're called scrap pieces or waste pieces or something like that. So you can do some kind of like test stitching on it just to make sure it is what you want to stitch on. Because uh, there's nothing worse than buying a load of linen and then finding out like you don't like stitching on linen and then you, you're you stuck with it all. Um, unless you give it away. So, yeah. Uh, and then obviously you need to check to make sure you get the right size needles. Because obviously you don't want a needle with a great big eye if you're stitching on something, say, like 28 count um, fabric. Because it's just going to make your holes absolutely huge when you're threading your needle. Which is not what you want. Um, so I use a 28 count needle. And it's a Bowen needle. Um, these are what I got from K 
Karen, um, the needle bug. Uh, not long after she started doing her floss tubes, she was, um, she changed her needles to, I think she got one of those with the balls on the end. You know, they're called Easy Glide Needles, I think they're called. Um, so she was giving away a load of needles. So I asked her if I could have some and she sent me some. And I didn't think she was going to send as many as she did. I was just expecting like maybe about 10 or so needles to turn up. And she must have sent me 100. <laughs> so I've got a fair few needles to last me a while. Um, so yeah. And then obviously the next part when first getting into cross stitching you need to decide as well what kind of thread you're going to be using. Whether you want to do the DMC threads. Whether you want to look at doing the fancy floss ones or the uh, over dyed f floss so but obviously your DMC is going to be your cheapest thread unless obviously you get them on special from like eBay or something like that but yeah your main your cheapest ones are going to be your DMC once you start getting into your your dyed ones they're a little bit more expensive But some of them, to be fair, are nice. I would say I got a couple of, well, I got given, yeah, one or two silks, I think they were. No, I got a silk from um, someone who sent me some stitchy kindness. Um, and that one feels really nice. I haven't used it yet. I'm going to use it soon, I think. I'm going to try it out on something. Um, but everybody says how nice silk, some, most silks are. Uh, I mean, obviously, the silk I've got is DMC silk. Some people don't like the DMC silk. Some people do, so I'll give it a try and see what it's like. I haven't used it yet, as I say. And then obviously the next thing you need to work out for when you're starting cross stitch is how you're gonna stitch. Whether you're gonna stitch in hand, whether you're gonna use a Q-snap, use a hoop. You need to find something that you're comfortable with. Um, whether you want to stand to support it, because you can get the lap stands, you can get the big tall stand-up stands for your scroll frames and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's a lot of different options out there. So you definitely need to decide what it is you want to stitch on and how you want to stitch it. I will say with me, I prefer the Q-snaps uh, to the hoops. I do use hoops every now and then, but I prefer the Q-snaps. Um, obviously I couldn't afford a stand or anything like that so I did all my stitching how I'm doing it now on my knee so I'm used to stitching like that so every now and then I still will do it obviously besides within my stitch with me um, but since I've got my Lowry stand I do prefer to use that one so I'm just marking my chart so yeah so there's lots of different options so all I would say is do your, do your research first before diving into it. You don't want to spend a load of money and then turn out that you're not enjoying the craft. And then you're going to be out of pocket. Right, so what's the next part? Uh, what would you consider your biggest mistake or lesson learned during your cross-stitch journey? Um, stay away from hate. Because <laughs> uh, you end up spending too much money on charts. Uh, no, um, so, probably the biggest lesson I've learned is that things don't go as quickly as what you expect them to. Um, like some of my pieces, you're like, oh, it's not that big. It's only so many stitches by so many stitches or couple of inches by a couple of inches shouldn't take me that long to get that done I should have that done within a couple of days maybe a week and then it turns out it's a couple of months and then when you're planning to have it done by a specific time you then end up either not being able to complete it in time or you end up rushing um, and then obviously when you rush you make mistakes so I don't know if any of you can remember seeing my uh, majestic tiger piece um, that was the very first piece that uh, I've finished since being over in Australia. Um, now that one, while I was out of work, I worked on that all the time. But I did start rushing it 
thinking oh, I can easily get this finished soon and it took a couple more months to get it finished. So on there, there are a couple of mistakes. Um, you won't notice them, but a lot of it is just like within the confetti areas. And it's like, all right, it doesn't matter if this is this color or this is this color stitch and it should be this one. Um, and you think, oh, that make no difference. But then when you stand back and you look at what it's actually forming, you're like, ooh, maybe I should have made sure I had the right color in there. So they had one or two you can get away with, I suppose. But um, yeah, I mean, it's like if you look close upon my majestic taggy, you'll see stitches that have not been completed. So <laughs> I'll have been like going across, like if it was a full row, and like just doing one leg and then coming back and doing the other leg. And then I'll have either stopped to talk to somebody or something, and I've missed crossing a leg off and then just carried on. And then you look after it's like, what? how did I miss that one? Or you'll miss a stitch out in one place. Now that one's not too bad if you've missed a stitch out because you can just go back and fill that one in. Um, when you're doing haze, you get used to that, doing your ninja stitches, as they call them, just a single stitch in a random place. So that doesn't bother me at all. Um, also as well, you have to, another lesson I learned is that things are not as cheap as what they used to be. Uh, when I first got my, um, couple of my projects they weren't expensive they were they were cheap and then you're starting to like look into kitting things up yourselves and it gets a bit more expensive especially when you're doing like the haids because obviously they're a lot bigger and you have a lot more floss and then having a look at like kits and that now you find out that they've like almost doubled or tripled in price since when you first bought some so yeah things are a lot more expensive now so my biggest mistake is not picking up cross stitching years ago um, when I was younger because I knew, as I said before, I, first time I ever did cross stitching I was at school. It was only a small project. It was a little mouse. Uh, it was part of like the alphabet, so it was a mouse and then the M. And that was the first piece I did. Now I, I enjoyed it. I always enjoyed it. Um, but then I never did anything with it. So. Mind you, at that age, young lad, I was always out, so I was never home anyway, so he <laughs> probably wouldn't have got much work on it anyway, if I, even if I had started it back then. So, But yeah. Um. So the last question then was, when you first started cross-stitching during your recovery, what did you become most excited about and love as a new stitcher back then? So, for those of you who aren't aware, obviously I had a brain tumour removed back in 2009. Um, and that's when I started doing my cross-stitching. Um, so, yeah, the reason, I'm going to say, I fell in love with it um, because of the fact that it was relaxing and time just flies. Once you're in your zone with regards to stitching, you think you've been stitching for 20 minutes and then you look up and it turns out you've been stitching for like an hour. So, time just flies. So, when you're sat at home, because you can't go out anywhere because... After having my surgery, I was told that I had to stay in as clean as an environment as possible to prevent getting an infection. Because obviously when it's to do with your brain, it's a bit more dangerous. So, stay in as clean a room as possible for, I think it was two weeks. Um, to avoid getting any kind of infection in the wounds. And so, this just pass the time away so my two weeks flew so and then obviously the first piece I worked on was I don't know if you remember seeing it was the tiger that was just laid down in a bit of grass so that was the first piece I did and then obviously I started looking for more so I was really excited when the new pieces turned up but then obviously it's a case of oh I want to start that one I want to start that one and <laughs> And it just snowballs from there and you just want to start everything. So, hence the reason 
a couple of pieces got started and didn't get finished. But I'd do it all again. Um, but maybe next time I'd uh, maybe get a bit further on. Um, I don't think I could do be a monogamous stitcher. Um, obviously I have been. Um, but since starting, well, before starting Frosty, I've been doing multiple uh, pieces. I prefer having the variety. So it's like some people say, like when they're like close to a finish and they just decide to stitch on that one piece solely, you, f you get a bit burnt out of working on that same piece and you're like, ugh, just want to work on another one. So it is good to have the option of moving on to a different piece, doing a bit on there, and then going back to the piece that you were working on. So, that's how I find it anyway. So, hopefully Jackie, that answered all your questions. I say it wasn't many. She said there was no, I didn't have to do those, but I thought I would. It's nice to be able to share a bit more of experience and what they found along the journeys. And what year? So, well, I've been talking a fair bit. We're already at 36 minutes. Um, as I mentioned in uh, my update, this one's probably going to be a bit longer than normal. I'm not going to do the two hours, so sorry. Uh, there's no way I can talk for two hours. <laughs> well, I probably could, actually. I used to work in a call centre. I was talking all day, every day, for eight hours a day. Well, that was different. You needed to get a bit of a break in between. So, as you remember, if you did watch my last YouTube channel, uh, channel video, um, I got those lovely charts gifted to me as a birthday present. And I was telling you how much I want to start, at least the one with the tigers on. I really like that one. Um, well, the fabrics that I was given, if you remember back a couple of, a couple of videos ago, um, one of them was a really big piece of 28 count Lugana. Now, I've been having a look at that and thinking, I could maybe get two heads on that. <laughs> Possibility. So I'm going to have a, another look at that later on. And I think if I can... Then I'm going to be starting the tiger piece. And I'm also going to be starting the underwater dolphin and turtle piece as well. Because I really like that piece as well. Funny enough, I really like all my pieces. That's probably why I picked them. <laughs> um, so, yes. So, there may be a couple more new starts on my next video. We will see. I say once I've done my calculations and worked out what's what. We will see how we go. So yeah, so there might be two more new starts this week at least. So I guess that gives me a lot more variety. The only thing is now I need to get some more of those mesh bags because I run out on project bags. Well, I don't have project bags. I run out of the mesh bags. Um, so I've got nowhere to store the new ones. So they're either going back in the the bags that the fabrics came in. And then I'm putting them in with one of the other projects so that I don't lose them and then get to stay safe. So yeah, so I think I need to invest in some more of those. So I might look into that. Uh, not this week, next week. See if I can get some more and then get these all put into their own little project bags. So if I do start the 
the other two heads that I'm wanting to. That will take my heads up to, I think it'll be nine. <laughs> so yeah, nine heads. Whether I'll get them all finished in my lifetime or not, who knows? Um, but I know for a fact I'll be getting the deer one finished because <laughs> that one's almost done. Well, I'll say almost done. A couple more pages left to go in it, but it's getting there. Yeah, and then obviously when October comes I can start working on my other pieces again so I want to see if I can get the Tiger of the Heavens I think that was probably the nearest one to being completed so I'll get that, see if I can get a fair bit of work done on that one I mean obviously once I finish the uh, the Mini Deer Creek one I'll be able to uh, just pick another piece to focus on um, so that'll be like my weekend stitching so i think the first one that that one will be will be the tiger of the heavens um because that's the nearest one to being completed and i think maybe a couple of a couple of weekends on that one and that'll be done so if i start that in say november i would say i would have that done before the end of the year because once you start stitching on that one it's quite easy to get going on it so so right there we go now uh, a note to people as well if you're going to try doing pin stitching on a 28 count fabric make sure you have really really good eyesight uh, i managed to do it on one of the other pieces that i started but it's a bit more fiddly than doing it on the 25 count. It is possible to do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> it's definitely a lot harder than it looks. So, okay, maybe this video won't be a lot longer than what I expected. We're already at 42 minutes. And that's that piece done. So, not much really of a, a life update. Work's getting busy, um, as I mentioned before. Um, that's due to uh, people getting their last orders in ready before Christmas. I know it sounds silly, but obviously we've got to get the timber in to get it all cut to their sizes and then sent out to them. Um, we don't know when we're breaking up for Christmas yet. Uh, we, were try we were all trying to work it out the other day at work. And by the looks of it, we'll be breaking up on the 23rd of December which I was hoping was going to be a bit before, but we always get three, four weeks off. So it means we don't go back until around about the 14th of January. So come December and January, you know for a fact I'm going to be getting a lot of stitching done because I've got three weeks off. Assuming I don't go out anywhere. Um, obviously at that time of year, it's summer over in Australia. Uh, so it's nice and warm. So everyone will be going to the beach and planning outings. Obviously it depends on everything with the covert situation as to what happens but we will see um so yeah so work's picking up a little bit um i go and get my eyes checked on saturday um so we'll see how good my eyesight is i think it's still pretty good i can stitch on 28 count oh, i can see the holes no problem so well, at least i know my close-up vision's all right Hopefully my long distance one is two, so <laughs> um, so we'll see on that one. Um, so so what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to start doing some more of my um, threads onto my uh, thread drops. So that, that's all organised ready um, for these pieces. Um, I'm going to go through and have a look and see if I can get those two new heads started. Hopefully I can, because um, that'll be quite fun to have more than more and more heads on there so i'm not done too bad so what we've done we've done 80 stitches and for the stitching side of things it's probably been what half an hour so yeah that's not too bad at all that's what i like when you're doing like one color in a go you can seem to get more stitches done than you do if you're just constantly changing out and switching colors over so so we're going to leave this here then guys um so my video did turn out to be about 44 minutes you never know maybe next time i'll do one a bit longer again if you've got any questions or you've got anything you want me to answer for you then by all means just uh, leave them in the comments below 
um, and then I will answer those on my next Stitch With Me. As I say, if you haven't watched my um, last YouTube video, um, then jump onto there and have a look. Um, I'm gonna say there is the giveaway that I'm doing on there. Um, it's for a hate chart of your choice, uh, which I'm gonna pay for uh, and get that sent over to you via email. So again, if you're interested in that one, go there and comment on that video. Um, I'm not on this one, on the other one. Um, and then I'm gonna say that'll be drawn in well, it was two weeks from when that video was posted, so. So yeah, so thanks very much for stopping by, guys. Thanks for stitching with me and allowing me to ramble on, as you do. <laughs> um, so again, as I say, any questions, feel free to email me. I'll put my email at the uh, end of the video like I normally do, but um, just in case you can't see it, it's uh, stitch at, at gmail.com. Uh, again, you can follow me on Instagram as well, and that's at Dizzy Stitcher on there. So again, any questions, comments, feel free to drop them below. Send me an email, send me a message on um, Instagram, uh, Instagram, um, and I'll answer them on there. Um, but until next video, guys, stay safe, happy stitching, and I will speak to you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.